the new update of Naruto to Boruto Shinobi Striker quite literally broke the game. I mean seriously, it's been almost two weeks now since the update and PlayStation players like myself still can't log into the game. Anyways, today we're gonna take a look at everything that's new in this update, everything that has been announced, the new Shisui DLC, the new weapons that have been showcased and especially also the Ninja Hawks and the balance changes. The game definitely changed a lot with this update. In case you didn't know, they basically reworked the whole attack class. So that's really big and actually affects a lot of different areas of the game and the sooner you start to understand what these changes actually mean for you as a player and are able to adjust to that, the better it is for you. So definitely make sure to watch the video all the way to the end because I promise you, if you don't, you are gonna miss out on a lot of valuable tips that you are not gonna be told anywhere else here on YouTube. And that is gonna be a major disadvantage. By the way, don't get confused. I finished recording this whole video soon after the announcement dropped during that long ass maintenance. But with all the stuff they have been releasing, I've just been so busy with other things that I totally forgot that I still have this lying around and have to make a thumbnail for it. So when I was recording this video, I couldn't log in and test stuff or have seen any of it in action outside of their trailers. But a lot of it, especially on the Ninja Hawks, the balance changes and the future of the game is still very relevant. So it's absolutely worth watching. I don't want to talk too much about the new Shisui DLC. The real Quinn Jr. already made a beautiful video on it, where he was also showing all the different counters for the Susano and all of that. And there are already enough reviews on it from people like Globku, so I'm just gonna quickly go over it before we move on with the next point. The first ninjutsu is called Susano Tsukumo. This is a ninjutsu that summons Susano to protect you, and with additional inputs allows you to unleash a volley of sandbone at your foes. Upon activation, it clads you in Susano and protects you from all attacks. Plus, the power of the Sandbond is increased in proportion to how much damage you were able to mitigate. Yeah, that's already just straight up a lie because, as you can see in, uh, in Quinn's video, there are actually a lot of things that this Susano won't protect you from. So, yeah, that, there's a lot of breakers uh, for that Jutsu, so they're they are just straight up lying here. Both Susano's defense and Sandbond attack have a wide area of effect. So like most defense type ninjutsu, you'll get the most benefit from using it at the front lines. By timing the guard effect just right, you'll be able to massively increase the damage output of this ninjutsu. Whether you're protecting your allies or guarding against an enemy attack, learn to reach your opponent and time the guard just right to send them flying with your powerful counter attack. Interesting mechanic and good AoE, but as I said, there are a lot of things that will actually break the Susano. So you're not as invincible as they make it sound in their description. But really kind of a cool jutsu. I gotta wait until the servers are up and I can really test it for myself before I can tell how good it actually is and what its exact limitations are. But sounds pretty cool so far. The second jutsu is the Genjutsu Sharingan, which is kind of like a mini Kodo. It grants you and nearby allies a Sharingan effect, but after you subbed out, it will launch a Phantasm at your enemy that puts them in a Genjutsu for a moment and deals a bit of damage. So it's more like a mix of Flame Formation, Sharingan, Limbo Clones and Tsukuyomi. With less range but a longer hit stun so you can counter attack easier. Really cool jutsu. I didn't play with it yet, but I bet you can set up some nice clone traps with that and the Explosion or Water Clone for example. The secret technique is basically an ass track. You fly up with the Susano and then aim where you want to go down again. And I really love how all of the Shisui DLC moves are just very skill rewarding. You really just need to be able to predict enemy movements a bit and have some game sense to get some cool multi kills and you can also just nuke a base or flag from afar and help your team out that way. Really cool ultimate and I'd like to have more of these moves that don't have the typical lock on auto aim kind of tracking and give you more freedom to set up things right with a little bit of skill. It's basically a trick shot. He also comes with the new shadow shredding infiltration ninja tool that can be thrown at an enemy and then you teleport in. So it's kind of like a flying Raijin Kunai that tracks your opponent. But it has a very limited range and if you don't hit anybody it just kind of explodes and you may or may not be able to hit somebody with the shrapnels. They also announced a couple of new weapons. I'm going to more detail on them once they release and I can actually test them. But besides the Madara weapon that is already out and that I already covered in the shop update short, they also announced two more SS Plus weapons. Range types will get a weapon modeled after size ink scroll that seems to have different kind of range projectiles as well as proper melee combos. We can already see a couple of long stunts and its ground combos when we look at the trailer, but as I said, more on that when the weapon is out. The animations already look fantastic though, that's so cool. 
And then the other SS Plus weapon is for heal types, the Sage Art Monstrous Chaos that is based off the Chakra weapons Kinshiki and the Fused Momoshiki we're using, and that has some kind of unique mechanic to it, where it absorbs Chakra to increase your DPS and fire projectiles during your combos. They also showcased a Yavara themed defense weapon that uses corals and water style in its combos, and you can already see in the trailer that it has a drop down in its aerial combos, so that one will probably be able to combo reset and do infinites. Definitely looks like a nice weapon as well. And the last weapon they announced are the Aburame Insects for heal types, and that one looks just amazing as well. I really appreciate them adding all these different fighting styles from the series. It just offers so much customization for your in-game character now, in terms of his fighting style and origin. The weapon also looks pretty decent so far. Good charge attack, a couple of long stuns, pretty fast combos. I just don't really like the sound effects of it. I think they might get annoying very fast, but time will tell. They also gave us a little sneak peek on the new Six Tails DLC Jutsu Pack. With this secret technique, the user performs a host transformation into Six Tails and launches bubbles, then follows up by shooting a single massive bubble. At its core, this is a simple projectile launching secret technique, but the bubble emitted moves at a slow speed, which allows you to both lead your foe and put pressure on them for a prolonged period. This technique can be avoided fairly easily if launched directly at an opponent, but if you use it in the middle of a team battle, you should be able to affect multiple enemies at once. That's the description they gave us. So for this one it really depends on the damage, charge rate, speed etc. to really determine how useful it really is. But sounds pretty interesting so far. I can see this being pretty annoying alongside stuff like C2 Dragon, Temari Tornadoes and Yutakata Pipe for example. They also revealed the new summoned animals they are gonna add in a couple of weeks probably. The brand new Ninja Hawks. They, just like the Ninja Hounds, have Attacker, Supplier and Healer variants. So they are probably gonna have the same boosts. But other than the Ninja Hounds, the bird will not hit anybody on contact. It will only attack your opponent on the dismount. Which is pretty interesting, because not only is that a projectile you fire at your enemy with actual tracking, it also is a multi-hitting one which will hold your enemy in place for a bit, so it might actually make for a decent combo starter. They state that the ninja hounds are a bit faster than the birds, but honestly just the fact that you can just fly around freely with it still probably provides more mobility anyways. But yeah, those are the main differences. The ninja hound is faster and hits on contact, so with the ninja hound you can actually set up combos and use the ninja hound itself to deal damage or provide constant interruption. And the bird can fly obviously, and instead is more used to start a combo rather than dealing damage with the bird itself. The sheer presence of this thing will definitely change the game's dynamics a lot, it's just even more vertical and fast paced now, it automatically becomes a lot more tactical and things like positioning become more important than ever before. It also probably benefits range types the most, since it's gonna help them creating the right angles for their attacks, to gain high ground, to be hard to catch and all that kind of stuff. It's definitely one of the greatest and most impactful additions we have this update period. If you don't want to be caught off guard by players raining down rocks and fireballs on you from above, or constantly get punished on base and flag, you need to check what's happening above you a bit more now. It's gonna be easier for players to avoid your field of view and sneak into your backline to launch surprise attacks. And as I said, it's just gonna be a lot more vertical now, so work on your aerial movement and your tracking. One very easy tip that I can give you that will make a huge difference is that for example if you want to chase somebody that is above or below you. It is way easier if you lock off and rotate your camera towards them rather than just being locked on, because that way you will actually be able to perform a charge attack upwards or downwards instead of being stuck midair just swinging away at nothingness. And then also the fact that you can cancel charge attacks by blocking, for example if you are out of aerial cancels. So if you are chasing somebody that you can't catch up on just yet, you can always just charge a little bit to follow them, block cancel and reset the charge to keep chasing them at close distance rather than executing and missing a charge attack which would slow you down and allow your enemy to gain distance or just straight up punish you. You can also hold the L2 button during your charge attacks if you want to always immediately cancel out of it as soon as you can, but timing it right usually does more for you. I hope you all understand what I was talking about since I can't really record anything right now because of the maintenance still going on on PlayStation, but if you join the Discord, you learn these kind of things anyways, and there are plenty of people that you can ask stuff about the game and that will share these kind of things and will give you further explanations and examples if you need them, or that will just straight up join up on you and practice it with you in-game, you will find an invite link in the video description and the pinned comment. 
but even more game changing are the balance changes. I will still go over each and every one of them in a separate video, but for now, let's just talk about the biggest ones that they also announced in the development letter. I'm just read it real quick and then I'm gonna say something to it and also explain how you need to adjust to those changes. This time we'll be focusing on the following two topics. Change to the effect granted by attack types when using strong attacks and individual changes in the 2.56 update. Like last time, these will be rather long explanations, so bear with us. Change to the effect granted by attack types when using strong attacks. The first thing we'd like to address is the disable substitution jutsu effect applied by the strong attacks of attack types. It will be changed to an effect that prevents the shortening of substitution jutsu cooldown time in the 2.56 update. This change should reduce the number of instances where an attack type uses a strong attack to seal their opponent's substitution jutsu and takes them out without any counterplay. With this change, we want to give you guys more chances to break out of attack type combos. Initially, the ability to debuff enemies with the disabled substitution jutsu effect introduced in a previous update was meant to be a main feature of attack types, allowing you to trap enemies in long combos for massive damage. However, in survival exercise and other game modes, it became possible to combine with ninjutsu and ninja tools to trap enemies in extremely long combos that they couldn't break free from with the substitution jutsu. To counter this phenomenon, we've changed the effect to one that prevents substitution jutsu cooldown time reduction. In Shinobi Striker, taking damage reduces the cooldown time of the substitution jutsu, but after this update, the cooldown time of substitution jutsu will not be reduced if you're hit by an attack type strong attack. After using the substitution jutsu, there is still a chance that you can get caught in one of the previously mentioned long combos, but it will be much harder for you to find yourself in a situation where you cannot use the substitution jutsu at all. Because this was such a large change that affects the balance between the different types, we felt the need to give a longer explanation. We will be keeping an eye on the power balance between the different types and make further adjustments if we feel one type is exerting too much influence over the battlefield. I think this is a pretty welcome change. You know, everybody that ever talked to me about this topic will notice that this explanation sounds kind of familiar. Because that's basically what I've always been saying. Listen, attack types having sublocks on their heavy attacks is not broken in a 4v4 context. If the enemy attacker can do a full-on sublock infinite on you from full to zero without getting interrupted by one of your teammates, it is either because your teammates simply can't help you right now because they are already losing the teamfight around you anyways, or because they have no team play and awareness and are not providing any peeling for their teammates, which, fair enough, you're gonna lose games if you play poorly. It would just mean where other classes need to catch you twice in order to effectively deal damage, they can just right away deal damage without having to bait your sub, or can use it to finish you off so you can't sub out towards the end of a long combo. If you compare that with other classes, it's not all that powerful and unique. Any class can deal damage and every class has a couple of ways to work their way around your sub and kill you in one go. I mean, those are always just tendencies, but if we look at defense types for example, they are designed to be able to control space and to control multiple enemies easier. And in order to be better at controlling multiple enemies, you obviously also have to have an easier time dealing with a single person. So they are the strongest and most overwhelming class in a 1v1 scenario. Range types have no cooldown ranged attacks. They can just constantly participate in multiple fights simultaneously. And a very simple thing like just interrupting an enemy that is beating on your teammate right now with a little kunai can change the tides of battle from your teammate getting beat on to your teammate now being able to beat on the enemy player. So they have constant interruption, are really good at kiting enemies, at following up on teammates and close in on kills, yeah. A lot of the stuff they have is good at finishing off targets, anti-heal, things like the weasel summoning, flank control, etc. Heal types have instant guard breaks and, well, healing. Believe it or not, healers are actually the strongest class in the game. Think of it like that. What is more annoying to play against? two healers or two attackers or range types or whatever. And on the other hand, you can easily run without an attacker or any other role type and can still make it work. Everybody can deal damage and can replace the DPS, but no other class will be able to fill the support role properly. And if the enemy team can constantly heal up during a fight while you are just getting whittled down, even if you win the fight, people are gonna die eventually and it will unavoidably put you in a huge resource disadvantage and on equal footing, 9 out of 10, going without a healer, you have no chance. Not saying that as a good player, you necessarily need to have one. You can also just be significantly better than the enemy team and still win. 
but he has still the biggest disadvantage compared to lacking one of the other role types. So don't get me wrong, the attack type heavy's effect of locking somebody sub, or also even the new one with not filling up the sub cooldown, are very powerful, but attack types, at best, have been the third strongest class in the game. Heal and defense come first, and then the DPS classes. It's just, as they stated, in survival, where you don't have any teammates, it's gonna be very annoying, and being able to kill in one go without the need to get your sub is something all classes can do, but it's also something they usually will have to bring specific moves for, and not just have on default. And yes, you can just avoid being caught, it's by far not unbeatable, but it still puts you at kind of a tactical advantage if you only have to catch them once, but they will have to catch you multiple times, especially in a 1v1 context. And most importantly, it's also just a very frustrating experience that has nothing to do with fun and interactive gameplay. A lot of people have been fed up with that mechanic, and I really think they found a very good solution now. Because with attack types not sub blocking you anymore, it also adds more freedom for combos and just makes dealing damage effectively a lot more skillful for the whole attack class while still providing them with the ability to hold you in combos better than other classes and kill you faster. It is now overall way more skill based. They can still run things like Flaming Hook and Oboe, or Youthful Raw Oboe, Imperial Wrath, all sorts of things that block or empty your sub. You will always have these kind of builds on any class, but the class itself is not as cheesy anymore now. It will actually require you to know the ins and outs of the weapon and have better macro management to deal damage effectively. You need to keep track of your enemy's sub cooldown and combo counter better than before and pick the combos you do wisely based on those factors as well as the DPS of the different combo strings at your disposal. So I guess we can, once and for all, stop the attack type bashing now. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's continue reading. One of the existing ninjutsu we've made improvements to is Firestyle Phoenix Flame Scarlet Claw, which now makes the user temporarily invulnerable when activating the ninjutsu and allows them to do a backstab. You can use it not just to attack enemies, but as an emergency spacing maneuver to put some distance between yourself and an approaching enemy. That really sounds like an amazing change. I can see this being really nice with something like Icicle Swallow or Angelic Advent. It's really gonna be hard for your opponents to catch up to you. In addition, the secret technique Inferno style Susano Flame Control will also be adjusted to increase both the number of times it fires black arrows and the rate of fire, so it launches a greater number of arrows more rapidly. That's nice as well. The duration of the super armor effect granted when using a strong attack with the double moon sword will be reduced. So that one's gonna be way easier to interrupt during his heavy spam towards the end of the animation. I guess that's a pretty welcome change too. The secret technique heaven concealed will grant an invulnerability effect. That was long overdue, I'm not gonna lie. Plus the claw edge kuruma weapon will be adjusted so its aerial damage is reduced and it becomes more difficult to keep enemies in midair. And yeah, obviously that change was very much needed. The aerial heavy of this thing was the only problem with the weapon. It was just kinda like a celestial air slice with way higher total stun duration and damage total that is also mobile and does not have any cooldown at all. You could loop it six times plus add the second aerial heavy at the end for some burst damage. So with the right stats you wouldn't even need any extenders to one shot combo somebody. And then the range and hitbox of this thing is just insane. I think we can all agree that this nerf is justified. I'll have to see how exactly they changed it when I can log back into the game again, but it sounds like a pretty good change. The problem with nerfing this thing was that outside of its aerial heavy, the weapon wasn't all that great compared to something like Chakra Claws, and it kinda needs that aerial heavy to make up for its charge attack. So I'm really looking forward to see how exactly they implemented that change. They also fixed the issues with Sand Shuriken and Needle Jizu that I talked about in my last balance patch video, and listen, everybody and their mother claims Oh, Bandai finally listened to me. And then everybody's like, yeah, I don't think so, bro. They're probably not out there watching your videos. But not gonna lie, <laughs> y'all don't have to be like that, yeah? Like, people feel heard, okay? They addressed issues that a lot of people complained about for a very long time. So, fair enough. They may or may not have listened to them. But you thinking that they probably didn't doesn't mean you have to attack anybody over a statement like that, okay? I mean, for my part, I damn well know they have listened to what I said in my last video. If you go back to that last balance patch video, after breaking down the balance changes, I exactly have broken down how they would be able to fix the Chroma Claw and that those moves were bugged and need to get fixed. And I know for a fact that they have seen that and not only my video, but also the ones of Basimus, where he pointed out several jutsus that didn't work properly, like the Guiding Thunder Barrier, for example. 
and not only ours but also of several members of the discord because we were actually directly talking to the support team not only telling them that these issues are there and when they occur but also provided them with the necessary data and video proof in order to help them fix the issue faster because that's what they usually ask you to do if you ever submit any feedback or report any bugs to them be sure to provide a video clip and as much information as possible so they have something to work with me and Basimus just forwarded them our vids, so did many others, and now an update later, boom, Edge Claw is nerfed, more or less how I suggested, boom, Sanchoregen, Needle Jizo, Guiding Thunder, all fixed this update, and I can't really tell if that has anything to do with my videos, or if that's just a coincidence and they're just stepping up their game understanding, or hired some new people for the balancing or jutsu design, but from how they are shaping the format right now, it keeps adding more depth and tactical layers and makes everything more skill-based all around. And you can also clearly tell by the way they talk about stuff in those development letters. I already said it last time, but I noticed it even more this time. They start to sound more and more like me from update to update. I mean, read that for a second. Whether you're protecting your allies or guarding against an enemy attack, learn to read your opponent and time the guard just right to send them flying with your powerful counter-attack. This is a ninjutsu that excels in both defense and offense by granting nearby allies sharing gun mode and by dealing damage to enemies with the phantasms. The effects are pretty powerful, but the effect radius and duration are fairly limited, so make sure to think carefully about the flow of battle before choosing to unleash this ninjutsu. Due to the freedom of use afforded by the secret technique, you will be able to use it in a variety of different ways. Aim in the center of a free for all, predict your opponent's movement and snipe them out, or target it at bases or scrolls. The choice is yours. At its core, this is a simple projectile launching secret technique, but the bubble emitted moves at a slow speed, which allows you to both lead your foe and put pressure on them for a prolonged period. This technique can be avoided fairly easily if launched directly at an opponent, but if you use it in the middle of a team battle, you should be able to affect multiple enemies at once. And then the whole thing with the attack type heavies and stuff, that whole explanation, like, that's the kind of stuff you hear me say all the time. Talking about making reads, anticipating your enemies, utilizing slower projectiles to apply pressure and affect enemy movements, also how they designed that ultimate and the kind of tips they gave on its different uses. I mean, I'm not saying they are watching my videos on a regular basis and got everything from there. I'm just saying they actually have a lot more understanding of their game than people give them credit for and they sound a lot more like that than they still did a while ago. And nobody out there can say, oh, they don't care, they won't listen and all of that. It's just factually not true. Like, go to that man Basimus YouTube channel and look at the community posts where he shared some of those exchanges we had with Bandai. So in case you ever wondered, yeah, that man and the whole Shinobi Hub Discord, that's who they have actually listened to. We've also been talking to them about the whole blue screen situation and over the course of a couple of weeks got them from basically saying, oh yeah, that's just the PS4's fault or did you try to reinstall the game to telling us, okay, We'll try out new ways in order to address this issue, since it really seems to be a big one, but it will take us a maintenance to do so. So at first, when they quote-unquote said they have been made aware of an issue with the PS4 version of the game and all that in a Twitter post regarding that long-ass maintenance, I actually thought, maybe, just maybe, they are working on that right now. But they later on clarified that they just messed up something with the Ninja Tool Shop. Nice. Good job, Bandai. Despite that, they really do listen to and appreciate your feedback. You just gotta use the right channels to submit it. If anybody wondered how you do that, my boy Basimus has a video where he explained how he usually reaches out to them. And in case any other creators see this video, the one Basimus did didn't get as many views. So if you care about the game and the community, you either share his video or maybe make one of your own where you show how your community uh, can do it. Because as I said, it really actually gets stuff fixed. Anyways, guys, let me know your opinions on all these changes in the comments. I'm still going to do a video on the balance changes. I don't know when. Hopefully, we can play the game again soon on PlayStation. You get to Quinn's video on the new DLC jutsus if you click on the left and to Basimus video on how to submit feedback to Bandai on the right. Peace out and never forget, if it has a health bar, it has to die.